Joining me now is someone who was in the White House on January 6, 2021, who witnessed the violent ramifications of Donald Trump's words up close and who decided to resign her position on that day. Former White House Deputy Press Secretary for the Trump administration, Sarah Matthews, joins me. Thank you for coming back. I know we've talked before. I've been really looking forward to talking with you. Let me start with the comments from this weekend. Um, what did you hear? I mean, you worked for Trump for some time. You obviously resigned, as I noted, on uh, after January 6th. But he said it's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That will be the least of it. What did you hear when you heard that? Trump oftentimes speaks in these kinds of incoherent, vague sentences. And so that allows people to draw to the conclusion that they want to, to fit their own narrative. But I think when you look at this sentence, obviously the Trump campaign is out there saying, of course he's talking about the auto industry. But then why would he use a phrase like, that's going to be the least of it immediately afterward. That alludes to something more. And in my eyes, yeah, sure, he could have been talking about the economy. But I think when you're looking at who the messenger was of this message, this is a man who helped incite a deadly insurrection on our nation's capital. So when he's using terms like bloodbath, it's really hard for me to give him the benefit of the doubt. And he also had a number of phrases I just outlined in that same speech that uh, would be concerning to anyone listening, including applauding insurrectionists uh, and having the national anthem sung, sung by many January 6th rioters. I would also note that he was not, he was for the auto industry going bankrupt. So that's important, important for people to remember. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you, one of the things that struck me is that many of the people the same people who have been working overtime to kind of explain and put into context his comments have not really seemed to take an issue with the fact that he uh, called insurrectionists, has been calling insurrectionists hostages, saying immigrants are not people. He saluted people, which is normally reserved for people in the military, as you know, convicted for their role in the insurrection. What do you make of that context here? The kind of overspinning an explanation of one comment when everything else seems okay. Yeah, exactly. That This one comment they're saying is overblown, but it does follow a proven track record of these kinds of unhinged comments from him and an increasingly violent rhetoric and apocalyptic rhetoric almost. When he says things like there's going to be death and destruction if he's charged in these criminal cases, that is, I think, a warning call to um, his supporters. He's telling them kind of marching orders almost. And we saw this happen in the lead up from uh, the election in uh, 2020 to January 6th where he told them to come to the Capitol. He said it was going to be a wild day that we needed to save our country. So he's putting these kinds of um, messages out there, hoping that they'll act on them. As you've said, you're, you're so familiar with his pattern of speech and his language and how he kind of injects things that don't always make sense. Um, and you saw that leading up to January 6th. Do you watch this? I mean, it must be difficult to watch for you personally. I think it is difficult to watch. It's, it's disheartening because obviously I went and served in the Trump administration because I believed in the policies. I didn't always necessarily agree with everything he said or did, but it's really hard for me now to look at um, people that I admired, politicians and former colleagues of mine who still are working for him, who are still supportive of him, because I think that he's just gotten increasingly erratic and unhinged in his behavior since losing the election. And I, I couldn't imagine going to support him or even cast a vote for him um, given everything that's transpired, especially when we look at something like January 6th and the uh, stolen election claims. He's never shown any remorse for what happened that day and instead treats it almost like a celebratory occasion. I mean, he, as you noted, plays uh, an alternate uh, national anthem at his rallies. And at the beginning of the rallies, they ask the uh, attendees to please rise for the unfairly treated January 6th hostages, as he calls them. And that's just completely absurd. And so it is really disappointing to think that I once supported this man and believed in his agenda and to see the type of things that he's pushing now. And, and the reason I talked about Maricopa County and the events of last month is because you can see people watching and hearing his language and echoing it in the way that we saw leading up to January 6th, which is what's so alarming. I, I want to ask you about former Vice President Pence, because... Um, you know, he said that Donald Trump calling January 6th insurrection as hostages is unacceptable. Everyone has not said that, certainly. Uh, he also said he wouldn't be endorsing Donald Trump. I, I wanted to get your reaction to those comments and sort of what you think the impact might be or, or might not be, I guess. I mean, I 
honestly got emotional when I heard these comments. I think I know Mike Pence to be someone who is a man of faith, a good man who only wants what's best for this country. And I think that it took a lot of courage for him to come out and say that he would not be endorsing Donald Trump. I mean, look, it's unprecedented. Mm. No vice president has ever said that their own former boss is not fit to serve. And he knew, like I knew when I spoke out against Trump, that that kind of effectively ends your career in Republican politics. And I think he knew that by saying he wasn't going to endorse him, that he might have been kind of signing away any future that he wanted in Republican politics. And so I admire him for coming out and saying that. I wish more Republicans would have a backbone like him and follow suit, because I know that so many Republicans privately say these things and believe Donald Trump is a disaster and unfit to serve and that January 6th is a horrific day for our country, but they would never publicly say these things. Do you think he's going to stick with it? Do I think? Um, I hope that Mike Pence sticks with it. Obviously, I think he has said that he won't endorse him right now, but I think that it would be it would be weird for him to go back on his word then and say he's not going to endorse him and then flip. So I think that it would make the most sense for him to stick to it. He did the right thing on January 6th, and I hope that he'll continue to do the right thing and not endorse him. And um, I don't think that I necessarily expect him to say he's going to vote for Joe Biden, per se. But I, I don't think, think Joe Biden's expecting that either. <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly. But I do think that it is a huge statement for a own vice president to say that he is not going to support his former boss. And so I hope that he does stick to his word on that. Sarah Matthews, I really appreciate you joining me again. I hope you'll join me again in the coming months as we're all trying to make sense of Donald Trump and the election and what people should understand about it. Really appreciate you taking you. the time.